Thank you. Thank you. This is a Immerse, Immerse, the podcast, podcast in Boston. We, we are delighted to have you join us. Immerse, Immerse is produced is by Charlie by Morrow, Morrow, Sean McCann, Sean McCann and Bart Plantinga for Morrow Sound, Vermont, Vermont, Vermont and Helsinki, and, Helsinki, and, Helsinki, and Recital, and recital edition, 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 Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Immerse. 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 Hello, hello, Charlie Morrow here for Immerse. And, uh, today our guest is Mickey Riemann. Mickey Riemann is a German media artist and producer of media events. Mickey invented the liquid sound concept and its installation in various locations, Bad Sulsa, Bad Schaundau, just to mention a few. And yes, do try to attend those events. They involve participants floating in body temperature salt water where they participate in immersive experiences that include underwater sounds, music, lights, and surround video. Riemann also developed the popular international full dome festival at the, at the Zeiss Planetarium in Germany. It features innovative productions, music, and entertainment in the genre of 360-degree audiovisual media and immersive full dome theater performances. He's also a sometime singer, a songwriter, and an author. I met Mickey in Bad Sulza, where I could enjoy the underwater sound system myself. My friend Max Newhouse had famously created Water Whistle for a swimming audience and performed it at NYU many years ago in their swimming pool. And I personally had unexpected consequences from performing a concert for fish underwater in Little Neck Bay. 1974, the night before, President Nixon resigned in our New Wilderness Preservation Band concert from the boat Unicorn attracted the world press. In this interview, Mickey talks about his early explorations of whale and dolphin languages as well as his more recent exploits. Surely Mickey gives our immersed audiences the wettest of all immersed stories. Great to have you here, Mickey. Nice to see you again. Yes, here we are. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, same same personality. Good. I, I was sad that after our meeting last time that it took so many years to meet again. We will have to do it in the virtual. But we, we, we're privileged that we did meet in person before going into Zoom meetings. That's our privilege in the past. That's beautifully said. Uh, how are things with you? Are you, are you in good health? So far, I've been spared any contact with uh, dubious viruses and stuff like that. That's so. fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, at the moment, let's attend to my little project. I'm doing a book and podcast, and uh, it's almost done. It's almost 50 people that I have collaborated with or work with in immersive experiences. And, of course, you came to mind first because of actual immersion in water. And I think, you know, I gave concerts for fish and have a long experience with under, underwater performance uh, since um, yeah. August 9th, 1974 was my first. But anyway, I wanted to ask you the history of your immersive creations and producing, and then ask you a second question about what you are um, working on now. What sort of things do you have going? Those two right. questions are what my piece is about. The way I've constructed the book is in sections. It's all based on timelines. So. I'm going to try to find out from you when you talk about your career, when you started, the years, and so forth. So I'm going to graph everybody's timelines, because I have a feeling that you and I, even though we're 10 years apart, we've been interested in some of the same things. I mean, your work in Berlin, which precedes you, which everybody loved, you know, it's all... These are important moments in your career, and to see how your moments are with the rest of us who are 
about 50 of us artists and, and entrepreneurs wor working with ideas of immersion. My particular story begins with the fact that when I was in my 20s, I was able to remember back to the time before I was born and recreate and get a good feeling of those pre-birth experiences and the sense of the birth. And so right. that set me up as a guy who was making various kinds of immersive things. So I've yes, worked all yes. my life as a producer and an artist. I've done various kinds of things that wrap people up in various ways. So that's why I feel kinship with you and with the other people. It includes architects and exhibit makers and uh, some of the pioneers in the dome field. You know quite a few of the people who are okay. in there. And Nephis and Kachun and, uh, are all involved. Yeah, okay. I, um, I'm excited. Uh, I, will, uh, I promise I'll read this stuff. I mean, uh, that's, <laughs> that looks like a, like a good thing. I think there's so much to be said about immersion. And this is more towards VR and, and that kind of stuff. I love the idea that you include architectural spaces, fish space, all of that. So, um, yeah, so you sent me these two major questions, which I'm happy to talk about. I would invite you to kind of to pose the question so that I'm on track. So we'll start the first question. What was your first immersive experience that you remember? It's funny that you asked me that I remember because from my family story, I had an immersive experience at age three, which I can't really precisely say that I remember it. But it was that I, in, in the little village uh, that we lived uh, at the time, I happened to fall into a little pond in, in the garden in front of our house. And I was totally submerged. So my, my mother tells me, And I must have had an extremely strong immersive experience at very at very young age. And it was uh, thanks to my uh, sister, two years older than me, that she saw this little boy kind of in a dreamlike situation, kind of kind of looking quite relaxed and happy, doing these movements in the in the in the pond, and then of course shouting, "Mum, mum, mum! Uh, Mickey is." fall in the in the pond and so so my mother ran, ran down and pulled me out and uh, i do remember that i was kind of a little discombobulated on the fact that i was kind of uh, here in the dry and, and dripping and i was put to bed and i i noticed the concern that people around me had had experienced but um since you asked me i think it was a very early Immersive experience for a three-year-old who didn't distinguish between life, immersion, water, excitement in the air, excitement in the water, careless and uh, running risks without knowing there were any, and being immersed in that thing. I also realized that it was kind of shocking for other people, <laughs> and I think uh, I was I was being much more careful then. Okay, I'll make a big leap ahead in my life to come to experiences that are closer to what you asked me. I guess there's this karmic undercurrent from this early boy experience that uh, kept me intrigued and made me very susceptible for romantic stories of mermaids, of uh, not so much of kind of um, white whale killing stuff, but more the, the romantic underwater crystal palaces and, and stuff so there was all these things that that caught my attention and i have to cut this short but although it's very important what brought me to install a temple for underwater listening for experiencing different media sound uh, and as the primary primary chapter and visuals and touch also That came through contact to an American musician, Jim Norman, who went out into the wild ocean to have musical dialogues with free living whales and dolphins and also other animals. But I teamed up with him when kind of I felt fascinated by his story. Go out in a boat, don't chase anybody just send out friendly musical signals into the water through underwater sound system. And if the whales respond and feel inclined to mingle their chants, their songs with the music that we play, 
I played the violin and Jim played all kinds of sitar and drums and, and, and people were chanting. When that happens, just be thankful, uh, but don't make it a conceptual necessity. So we went out to the uh, Pacific Northwest off the coast of Vancouver Island in Canada. And for about a week, nothing happened except that people were together forming kind of this community. And then one night, that was the immersive Gesamtkunstwerk, environmental opera, uh, stars, water and air all coalesced to form this symphony. Those orca whales, kind of massive 10 meter long beings, came swimming by. When they came up to, to inhale and exhale, was this amazing noise of this group. <gasps> that was shocking in it of itself. <clears throat> then it was in the night, they had this phenomenon of bioluminescence. It was a really kind of way of touching these bio, uh, this luminescent um, creatures, I think plankton or bacteria, or whatever. They looked like floating neon lights circling around our boat. Then, of course, the stars was up in the sky and we were on the, on the boat, tiny little humans with freezing cold. It was, I mean, the water was just four degree uh, centigrade. And then, of course, the sounds, that was kind of the key element of connection of those whales prompted us to, to interpret this as an invitation to play music together, to have an orchestra of whales in the water, humans in the, in the boat, and the environment, the all-encompassing cosmic starlight, air, and water to be our communal home. And so this orchestra just um, unfolded. I think probably the music was really bad that we played, but the whales didn't seem to matter and we didn't seem to matter because what counted was that, you know, that when jazz musicians play together, they don't have to know each other's language. They don't have to rehearse. They just feel the groove unfold and that's what happened. And we were just sort of in bliss, in tear, in excitement, in, in musical action. And we were smart enough to let the whales lead the way. So they were giving some signals. We, we made a pause, we listened, then we answered. It was kind of call and response and it was just mind bogglingly wonderful, beautiful. It only took about 15 minutes, but those 15 minutes changed my life. It was totally immersive, although I didn't use the term at the time. And it prompted me to shift my career from writing and traveling, which was what I was mostly doing at the time, to trying to figure out, well, if this amazing experience was of such enormity, of, of such quality and, and wealth, spiritual and physical and musical wealth to all of us, the one part that was the biggest mystery for us was how does that music sound and feel if you're in the water yourself? We couldn't wait to be reincarnated as orca whales. We wanted to have it now. <laughs> and so I studied German literature that was great to go into experimenting with underwater sound systems in my bathtub and ruining some stereo sound gear and whatever. But whatever, I was so poetically charged with this experience that I wouldn't stop and I wouldn't take any technician's no for an answer at all. That's bullshit. Just, just find another career. And so I started um, producing the first underwater concert in Frankfurt, which was my hometown. I was connected to the art scene and, and musicians came. Some of them became very famous musicians. But then it was just a friend's experiment in underwater music. And it was kind of technological. The technology was dubious. The experience was, for some it was exciting, for some it wasn't quite clear enough as to what it is. The water was too cold and it was, but anyway, the, the media loved it and it became kind of a, an art event and I became half famous for being half crazy to doing this. And I realized this is great as a kickoff, but it's not what I intend to have because I wanted to get it as close as possible to the initiation that I experienced it, that I experienced out in the free ocean. So instead of becoming a underwater disco manager in urban public pools, I just waited my time. 
until I got a call from friends who were renovating uh, an old spa and rehabilitation clinic in East Germany in the tiny little spa town of Bad Sulza. And they heard of my ex experiments and they had what I needed most or what, what I knew I, mo I needed most, that was body temperature, salt water. Body temperature, so you don't freeze and fight against getting cold. And salt water, so you just float along. You don't have to pedal or get into sportive activities. You just place your body and soul and mind in this almost embryonic situation. And then the only thing that you need to add is a quality sound system underwater. So you get to have a, a system that is adapted to the human physiology, but that basically mimics or recreates the musical experience that whales and dolphins have all their life, and they've had it for 30 million years. So this perfection we can never achieve, but we can move towards a simulation that is compatible with human physiology and is compatible with the kind of the artistic zeal and ambition that I also would never want to sacrifice. So this is a little long preface to, to one part of my career in immersive media, because when all this, then that was kind of the preface, the realization we can we can skip that. The fact is that now we have the Toscana Tabubat Zulsa with a liquid sound system. Liquid sound became my brand for underwater technology and music. And that's been going for um, liquid sound as a brand has been going for almost 30 years. The Toscana Tabubat Zulsa has been going for 22 years. And ever since I manage, I produce, I invite for underwater concerts on a regular basis. People come, we've had millions of visitors. The uh, the concept of liquid sound, Toscana Therma, has been growing t into three other thermos in uh, Bad Schandau, that's near Dresden, and in Bad Orb, that's near Frankfurt. And so the concept is, is successful. I'm happy because I'm the cultural director of these spa cultural institutions. And they help me to satisfy my hunger for getting immersed in water, in music, in sound, in mermaid-like dolphin orchestra spaces. And I'm so happy that I can offer this not just for myself, that, I mean, I'm selfish as in that, as I want to have this experience it for myself, but I'm also so happy that, I'm, that I can share it and open it for other people. So we have regular DJ nights, we have full moon concerts, we have the annual Liquid Sound Festival, which at the end of 2021 will be the 20th edition of the Liquid Sound Festival. It brings in musicians, dancers, visual artists, um, choreographers, and, and audiences who all mingle in this aquatic theater, theater and water-filled opera house. That's basically what it is. It's an opera house filled with water. So. When that is the one part of my immersive life, I kind of hesitate to call it a career because I never started out trying to create a career for me in immersive media. It kind of came as, a, as an added bonus for just <laughs> wanting to do what a passionate call uh, um, I've experienced in myself. But then, as you can imagine as to where the story goes from there, once you have an experience of flotation in body temperature salt water, your ears are submerged. You hear this eerie mermaid-like sounds that come from live musicians or whatever source. You really immerse in a multi-sensory, also very physical, very emotional, very spiritual flotation exp experience. You experience sound in a totally different way than you could ever experience on dry land because sound in water travels five times faster than on air which means you have your ears, your two human ears are too slow to differentiate stereo signals. So you're always 360 degree immersed in a audio world made of water. So this is strong enough as an experience to excite you on the auditory level. And many people prefer to have their eyes closed to really absorb that experience and to kind of retrain their nervous system to, uh, to appreciate this underwater audio experience. 
maybe even remembering that the ear is the first sense organ that the developing embryo uh, opens up. So the first sounds that any human being hears is sound experienced in the mother's womb underwater. And then when we get kind of bumped out into dry land, shockingly enough, most people forget where they learned to hear and how it felt to hear in that way. But when, then when they enter a liquid sound pool, they don't, they don't have to be esoteric or anything, but the body kind of goes back into this memory of, I don't know where it comes from, I don't have to know why, but it just feels good, it just feels cool, it just feels totally natural, and that's what it is. Hearing in water is totally natural, and so, and closing your eyes in the water is totally natural, even falling asleep in the water is totally natural, so, just to round this off, falling asleep in the water is, sounds unlikely if you look at how people usually swim in, in outdoor lakes or in the ocean. But in this very serene flotation arrangement that we created, we invite people to kind of let go of the sport, jumping, splashing behavior and focus on a more introvert, meditative experience of the water and of sound and of music. And when that happens, closing your eye is, is very beautiful, it's blissful. You get into a kind of semi-dream, lucid dream state while exposed to that. And you don't feel at all uneasy closing your eyes and falling asleep or kind of falling half asleep. And you may be in a state of half dreaming, half dancing, which is kind of a very nice experience. And as you dream and, and, and float along, you may at one point even open your eyes. And sometimes you kind of want to see a full dome, planetarium dome above you, as opposed to having kind of a regular swimming pool arena on top of you. And so this, this is such a totally natural extension to the auditory immersion that you also want the visual immersion surrounding you, which then will create the ultimate um, Gesamtkunstwerk. I think you know the term yes, created by uh, Richard Wagner. It's, it's a beautiful term. It can be very wishy-washy, but when you really come to defragmentize the sense input that you get and resynthesize that, then it's not just the eye, it's not just the ear, it's the whole body, it's really a surround experience, it's a Gesamtkunstwerk. So, in the pursuit of happiness in Gesamtkunstwerk, the natural extension to the liquid sound system that I just went into, that I took a long time to, ex to explain, the natural extension is the full dome experience on top of the liquid sound pool. And so, that is why at a certain time in my life, and that's also maybe um, almost 20 years ago, that I got deeply interested and intrigued by the emerging technology of digital folder projection. Um, I was very fortunate to be uh, living near Jena, which is the continuous oldest planetarium in the world. It started back in 1924. They created the, uh, the dome structure with engineer Bowersfeld, who then later inspired Buckminster Fuller to come up with with his amazing dome structures. So there's technology and astronomy and optical industry really, really developing and people working on different elements to create this amazing planetarium in invention. And so in the uh, early 2000s, then the idea that it's great to have astronomy shows and teach people about how the stars work and how amazing they are. But you can also use this space to create artistic experiences projected in 360 degree using projectors that are far more advanced than slide projectors and have a lot of kind of media server backdrop there. And I guess, you, I mean, I guess I can also shortcut this experience, the technology, the presence of immersive media as projection visuals has done great progress. And we're really happy in Jena to have started the Fulham Festival there back in 2007. We are now in the year 2022. We will have the 16th edition of the annual Fulham Festival, which is really, I mean, it's, it's so wonderful to have people, technology, artistic talent come together around these festivals.
but not to lose sight of my initial Gesamtkunstwerk dream. The more I watched and, and promoted in the Fulham Festival the, the art of immersive media in the visual realm, the more my kind of subcutaneous desire reminded me that there's work to do in order to bring Liquid Sound and Fulham together. So this is where we are right now. As we talk now, we are announcing a uh, cooperation of Fulham festivals around the world. That's Dome Fest West in LA, that's Fulham UK in Plymouth, UK. It is Dome Under Festival in Melbourne, Australia. And of course, it's the Jena Fulham Festival. And we team up to have this global best of Full Dome Showcase, which will be presented October 8th to October 10th, 2021. So the art of liquid sound is established and is thriving. The art of full dome projection and also 360 degree audio system, all this, the technology has really made rapid progress and it's now available and artists and planetarians make good use of it and have great ideas to to make that genre popular and worthwhile to go there. And as we speak now, we are confident that these two trains of immersive media will uh, eventually come to a um, fusion. We are hopeful that right in Bad Zulza, where I live now, we will be able to build an extension to the existing uh, Toscana town, which will, which, be, which will be a dome structure that has all of the above that is described. It has liquid sound, perfect concept like underwater sound. It has 360 degree dome projection on top. And I guess after talking to this, you will, I find it hard to, to imagine anybody not seeing the beauty and, and the natural, the natural quality of this experience. It doesn't seem to, to be like a wow, hoo ha. Uh, far out stuff. It's totally natural to synthesize the sense input that everybody gets from surround media to synthesize it in a dome-like temple dedicated to immersive media in the broadest possible sense, including hear, sight, touch, and the ambitious artistic talent to really make good use of the space trivial is an enemy of beautiful and and we we are not here to make this the next piece of trivial of triviality now that i'm turning 70 i don't want to waste my time with triviality and i think there i've met i'm, I'm surrounded by so many people with such talents that i don't want to waste their lifetime but rather ignite the best possible gesamtkunstwerk immersive media art that anybody can come up with and enjoy seeing that developing. So was that a, was that an answer or was it a question or was it whatever it was? <laughs> you answered very well. And I thought you answered both questions in one stream, which was very nice <laughs> with your stories from the past and vision for the future connected by your, your own life stream. So I, I really appreciate you're taking the time to tell me these thoughts and uh, I have no more questions because this was what I wanted to discuss and I think it was extremely focused and uh, it's been a missing piece in my mosaic. I felt that your work was important. As you know, I've been writing you for a while and uh, it's a, uh, this is the one missing piece and uh, with today we, we put the last part of the, of the book together. Yes, that, that's really touching that you say this and in a way I felt bad not responding to you earlier and at the same time i think you inviting me to uh, to let out this stream of thought today is kind of a reconciliation of my forgetfulness and in, in not responding earlier so i feel much better that we could talk about this now because things have also matured as opposed to having kind of a half-baked version of this story two years earlier. So thank you for not forgetting me and, and allowing me to express this yeah, as one live stream now. Well, thank you for persisting in your own work. I mean, that's the real, the real story is that you've had this vision and you've kept working at it. That's what really counts. You know, I'm your fellow traveler. I understand yes. what it means. And, and I thank you. I look forward to experiencing this full system that you're putting together, uh, edit 
in, in the future and where, where, wherever we can intersect. So hopefully the pandemic will um, release us from our confinement and um, I, I love to come and uh, experience what you're doing. Definitely. I mean, now that you are kind of in the know and that you're even dedicated to publish this in, in a very coherent way, you'll be the first to know when it opens. You see, the thing is, I dreamed of liquid sound for about 15 years before it was manifested. And I've been carrying around this full room liquid sound temple also for maybe 15 years. It, it may take longer to, to be manifest. It may happen next year. But uh, I think I wish for both of us that we live long enough and, and happy to meet in the pool and, and, and listen and, and enjoy and be immersed and be exposed and be encompassed by all that material. So I look forward for that. And, uh, you know, if there's an opportunity, I wouldn't mind creating something for it. You know, I mean, that's what I do in life. I create experiences. Uh, I'm a composer of experiences. So uh, it would interest me very much to um, recreate the experience that I had before birth and leading up to birth itself. As a yes. uh, as an experience for your for for your environment, I think that would be a really perfect piece. And I have a colleague, Rip Heyman, who's a close friend. He's been my we've been doing events, publications. We've worked alongside each other since 1970. And uh, Rip had a bad heart, and he died many times, and always came back. And as part of that, he had experiences with near death, and so he has a whole. He's done some movies, he's done compositions, he's a composer, he's also a sea captain. So the water side never left him, he spends most of his life on the water. But this whole coming back from death, so I would think a very nice thing would be to have a um, his work about death and my work about birth and find some people in between to deal with various stages in life that interest them. We could create uh, a kind of, kind of uh, vi vision that way. Well, thank you very much. I feel very honored by you mentioned this because I think that that exactly qualifies to what I described. This is very much beyond triviality. And uh, so I think the, the, the little boy experience that I had as a, as a three-year-old, that was also kind of a, a, as a kind of a initiation into submersion and immersion. And there is, of course, there's very, there's a close proximity between the near birth and the near death experience. It's kind of the long rainbow arc that, that combines these existential experiences that everybody, whether they want it or not, will have to go through. And so I've been, for some time, I, I was studying a lot with Stan Groff about the uh, prenatal and perinatal experiences and the, uh, the, the stuff that he developed starting from LSD studies in Czechoslovakia and into um, holotropic breathwork. I mean, there's a whole body of knowledge about this, but to create this in a piece of art, in an opera, that to me is is really sounds really worthwhile so feel yourself invited to let me know about this and i think that'll be great to uh, to really combine that well thank you i will keep in touch and that reminds me that uh, i knew for some time uh, joan halifax did you ever oh, meet yes. her yes of course i know her quite well when she was directing the ohio foundation in california yes. i was visiting her not her but the place i spent yeah. many many months and doing various programs meeting all the, the the great wild people that that she had invited actually this is also the first place that i that i met jim norman really um, nice the, the the way musician and yes it's it was kind of after going to school to university that was kind of my an, a most important part from my adult education that I received at Ojai. And, and yes, I hold her very dear. I get her a newsletter. I met her at a wedding of a, of a friend, Gigi, uh, Gigi Coyle, who was very close to, to the Ojai Foundation. And so I guess, yeah, these are areas when, when we're ignited by these themes that uh, then, of course, th those people are bound to bump into you sooner or later. Well, it's nice to uh, talk and I hope that We'll find more time to talk soon. And uh, I really appreciate today. Uh, thanks so much. And, uh, it's been a very exciting conversation. Good. So be well. Thank you, and Charlie. to your wife. And I will say hi to her. To her. I think uh, it was really good to, to be able to focus on 
your question my stream and, and realize where the parallels are. I mean, this is really, it's a gift to become aware of that. So thank you very much. Charlie, take care, be healthy. Okay, thank you, bye. is Immerse, the podcast and book. We are delighted to have you join us. Immerse is produced by Charlie Morrow, Sean McCann, and Bart Plantenga for Morrow Sound, Vermont and Helsinki, and Recital Edition, Los Angeles. Immerse. Immerse. An empty shell to fall back into the sea.